Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part one of my string class mini-series. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, click on begin. Let's scroll all the way down here to string class part one. When learning Java, there's a common misperception that a string is a primitive data type. There are two types of, uh, there are two data types that a variable can refer to, primitive data types and reference types. The most common initialization statement for a string variable looks more like a primitive initialization than an object initialization statement. For example, right, string s equals and then string literal abc semicolon. This looks just like a primitive initialization statement, so I find this somewhat confusing. Now take the next um, initialization statement here, string s equals a, a new, the new operator returns a reference to a new string object, right, and the string object we're invoking its constructor and passing the string literal abc into it. So. The new string object will contain the value abc. S is merely a reference variable of string data of string object type. Okay, now obviously s is a reference variable pointing to a string object with the value of abc. So this is much more clear, much more concise that we are creating an actual object reference here, right? This up here, you look at this and you're a little confused. It's just a string literal. Okay? So I'm going to go delve a little bit further here. So in both the examples above, F, S is a reference variable, and, a, and the string literal ABC is the value contained in an object instance on the heap memory. So I've made these next two sentences bold, and this will kind of explain it here. So a string literal is a series of characters in your code that is enclosed in double quotes, right? This is a string literal, enclosed in double quotes in my code. Whenever the Java compiler encounters a string literal in your code, the compiler creates a new string object with its value. Based on this explanation, it should be crystal clear that the string literal ABC is equivalent to new, uh, new operator, which turns a reference of a string object, right, and invokes the string constructor passing it a string literal ABC, one, ABC into its constructor, right? So this creates a new object. This is the same thing, only it's, think of it as shorthand, right? So once your code, once you hit Java C and bada bing bada bing, it basically turns this into this. So it's the exact same thing. So a lot of people are a little confused by this. Okay, well, it just looks like a primitive data type. You know, we're just assigning it right away. You know, how's that any different from say, int i equals 127 and then semicolon, right? You know, and so that, looks just it's just somewhat confusing but anyway so that's that's what's going on there so the most important thing to understand about the string class is that once a string object has been created it cannot be changed okay you're probably thinking what it cannot be changed sure you can change a string but that's that's thinking about it in like the the way of a thinking about a primitive right where you can go like in i equals 127 semicolon and the next statement you can go in i equals 10 or, uh, sorry, just i equals 10. And do the same thing with a string there, right? So, um, when learning Java, it is easy to confuse the actual string object with the reference variable that points to the object. For example, suppose we say string s equals, and then string little abc, then right after that we execute s equals, and then string little def. We are not changing the value of the object that contains the string little abc. We are creating a new string object def and pointing it to the reference variable and pointing the reference variable s to the new object. Because remember, this is the same as this. So we could simply, we could actually substitute, you know, uh, new string um, then open closing parentheses abc in here, right? And then we could say s equals new string and then in parentheses pass it the string little def and then with that new operator it's pretty obvious we're creating new objects we're just repointing where the reference variable is referring to so here's what can change the reference variable value right and it just contains a value that points to somewhere on the object heap and that's what this tutorial is going to literally show you 
And then what cannot change is the string object value. Okay? So this particular, what can change is the reference variable s down here. And what cannot change is the object that holds the value abc on the heap. What can change is where s refers to. And what cannot change is the value of a new object def that's on the object heap there, or on the memory heap. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. This should all make complete sense after I'm done with this. Okay, let's highlight this code, copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create, create one by right-clicking, selecting New, Shortcut. Type in CMD, Next, and Finish. Okay, let's go ahead and open it up. Type in Java C. You should see all this stuff scroll by. It's the Java compiler command. If you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. Then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. Okay, I want to type in MD Java. MD is short for make directory. Now I'll make a Java folder. Now I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I want to make another directory, and I'm going to call this uh, string1. I'm going to change directories to the string1, and then I'm going to notepad string1.java. String1.java is the name of my source code file. Okay, yes. Let's pull this up a little bit here. Paste all that in. Come up to file and save. Okay, so right off the bat, I am just going to go ahead and compile this and run it here. Pilot, clear our screen, and let's invoke the string one class. Okay, so right up here in this first two things here, right? So what I've got here in my first statement inside of the main method um, entry point here, first statement, string one si equals new string one, right? I'm creating a object a reference to a new object of string one, right? And there's, it's really not going to do anything other than demonstrate something here. But SI is a reference variable. And if you remember from the previous tutorials, I've done this quite often, where I'll just display print line SI, right? And what that'll do is that'll display the heap memory location that SI is referring to, right? So it'll say string one, which is the um, basically the object data type, right? And then the at symbol, and then this is the memory location, 69E0BFD. Yours, when you run it, it'll probably be some different value there, but that's basically some hexadecimal representation of a memory location where the string one object resides on the heap, right? And then we display the dot dash lines there, okay? Now, um, coming down here, right, I am going to declare... Um, three string uh, data type variables, one, two, and three, right? And I'm gonna initialize the first one using, you know, the, the kind of shortcut syntax. I'm gonna, send the sec I'm gonna set the second reference variable equal to the value of the first reference variable. And then I'm going to set the, the three reference variable equal to an instance of a new string object and I invoke the string constructor that takes basically a string literal parameter there, right? This is the longhand version, this is the shorthand version, okay? And then I'm gonna display all those three lines to the console, and then I'm actually going to display literally what one, one is a reference variable, right? One is not the object that holds ABC, right? That's, one merely points to it. So, you're probably looking at this hot mess here and going, what on earth is that? I don't, I don't know what he's, he's gone way above our heads here. So what I'm going to do is come back here. And if you watch my tutorial on the object class, right, we can go out here to the Java 8 API, the SC8 API here. And I'm looking up the object. And if, you, if you've been paying attention to all my tutorials, you know, especially on inheritance, every object is derived, every class in Java, whether you create it or... Um, it's one of the other classes it's derived from the object class. The object class, of course, has various different methods in it. And one of those methods is toString, right? And that returns a string representation of the object. Okay? And if we come down here to the toString and we actually read about it, it literally 
to you know to sum it all up, it basically calls this right here, right? Hash code up here, right? It basically uh, the class name plus the at symbol plus uh, changes like a hexadecimal string of the hash code. All right. So the hash code, you might be going, okay, what on earth is a hash code? And you don't really have to worry too much about that, right? But what the hash code basically is, is um, I'm just gonna come down here with this little, little sentence here. This is typically implemented by converting the internal address of the object into an integer, right? That basically says, okay, the, uh, the memory address where the object sits on the heap into an integer. Implementation technique is not required, but most of the time it's pretty much accurate there. We don't have to actually look at that memory. We just know, for example, that it's at that particular spot there, right? So this basically says this object here is located at this memory address right there, right? Okay. So I have merely cut and pasted everything from that to string um, right down here, this whole entire thing. And then I just merely inserted, you know, the, the name of the current reference that we're referring to, right? For the one and the two and the three hash codes here. So that's basically what's going on. This will actually show you one refers to an object on the heap and here's its address. So without any further delay, here is what we actually have, right? So um, first I print one and then I print, that's the, the value of the one, right? Or the value of the object that one refers to. And basically I could use like 1.2 string, but guess what? It will come back as ABC. And that's because in the string class, they've overridden the two string method to just simply display the value of the object there instead of its actual memory location. So, and if you don't fully understand what I'm talking about yet, don't worry about all that there. You don't really need to know all the, the details about how the inner workings yet there. But just know that uh, one, right, returns back ABC. Two, since we set the reference variable value two equal to the reference value of one, it also is pointing to an object with the value of ABC. Three equals uh, is a reference variable, right? and that returns back the value of this object D that holds the value of DEF. Now literally one refers to, and this is the java.lang.string class right here, right? And then the at symbol, and FC42 is a hexadecimal representation of the um, string object containing ABC on the heap, right? And you can see both one and two refer to that same memory location there. Right? DEF refers to a completely different memory address right here, right? Okay, so what's the next thing I do? I decided, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and display some more dashes and then I'm gonna set the one equal to three, right? And I'm not changing the value of the object that holds ABC, right? I am simply saying one and where it refers to, now it refers to the same object as three. So that's what that does, okay? So if we pop back over here, now we can see in the next little section, so when we display one, it now equals DEF, which is what three does. Two still refers to that same ABC object on the heap, and three still refers to its original object. So now you can see down here, one refers to, and then this object at this memory location is the exact same object that three is referring to. Two still refers to this same string object that one was originally referring to. So we've got two objects on the heap, three reference variables, two of them are pointing to the same object on the heap, okay? I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more. And last thing I'm going to do here is I'm gonna say one equals the reference to a new string object and invoke its string constructor, pass it the string literal GHI, right? Which will create a new string object with the value of GHI. Right, and let's go ahead and see what we got there. So we got our GHI, A, B, C, D, E, F. You can see now one refers to a brand new string object on the heap at this particular memory location. Two still looks at this guy here. Three still refers to that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and get this off screen there and leave you with, uh, leave you with some final thoughts there, so. Um, just to reiterate, a string literal is a series of characters in your code that is enclosed in double quotes. When the Java compiler encounters a string literal in your code, the compiler creates a new string object with its value. 
That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.